Hey, good evening all. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good to be back to the 351. I'll tell you what, I spent the uh, biggest part of the day Christmas shopping for the wife and kids. I always wait till the last minute. I mean, I guess I still got tomorrow, tomorrow's Christmas Eve, but yeah, I hit like three or four stores. I think I got, I think I got everybody covered. Uh, I usually try to keep my gifts more, uh, I like for the kids, I get them like, a, I think I bought the boy some arrows for his bow and arrow and got him a few tools and uh, bought the youngest daughter, got her, you know, little fishing pole and a fishing net. She'll end up playing with the net more than she will the pole. Uh, more outdoor type stuff. Stuff they will use. They got so much electronic stuff these days for these kids. I, I still like to keep them outdoors and getting their hands dirty. But anyhow, I'm glad that's over. Now I got my head torqued down and this is going to be one of those deals you talk to four different mechanics, you get four different answers. My favorite for smaller hardware, and these are half inch head bolts. I still like my old tried and true spring beam wrench, torque wrench. I've had this thing for like 35 years. It is made in the USA. I love it. I like it. But uh, yeah, you can just, uh, I just, being we're doing in frame, I just put my foot over here on the fender well. And you can just kind of lean into it real easy. See that motor's not moving at all. And just sit there on it. Bounce a little bit. Where like some of these spring beams, especially if it's foreign made, heck they could be off 10 pounds pretty easy. That old, that old spring, he's pretty... And you can feel it. You know, you can feel if that bolt starts to get a little funky. All of a sudden it starts to turn easy and your needle starts to move on you. You know, you're stretching it and it's getting ready to pop, you know. Because that's what we're doing. We're stretching them bolts out. It's the same way when you're putting track pads on a dozer or excavator. You know, you tighten it down and then you just, you got to stretch the hell out of them things. Or they'll, uh, or they'll come loose. Now, on, the, on the dozer and excavator, I'm not on the cylinder head. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, yeah, I still like my old spring beam on smaller hardware. And when we get to bigger stuff, uh, I'll go back to snap type torque wrench. But I think for the most part, I've tried to keep this project fairly, mm, I don't even know how to word it. User friendly, simple, simple as can be. I'm, I'm simple as can be, try to be. Uh, I don't think we've broke out any exotic tools. We're keeping the project in frame. We didn't even pull them. We don't need to. I never did have an engine stand. I didn't have one when I was a kid. Uh, we usually just, uh, when we do pull a motor, we usually pull it out and a motor like this will just sit on a table and flop it around. But uh, I rarely, rarely pull them if I don't have to. You know. If, Really, the only reason to pull a motor is if you got bad block damage or crankshaft damage, you know. That's about the only reason you need to pull one. Or if you physically cannot get the oil pan off. My dozer's that way. I can't get the oil pan off it. But, uh, yeah, I just remember being 16, 17 years old and, you know, you didn't, didn't have every tool in the world, but, uh, you know, you could usually scrape up simple stuff easy enough without breaking the bank and but one tool I will recommend that I've used a lot on many different projects this die grinder I got from Harbor Freight we bought that back in 2018 when I built my Ford Galaxy wow I think this is $50 or 48 something like that man we have used the time out of that thing on Customers projects, my projects. We used it a lot on, on the Gal or on the Ranchero project. Uh, these little pads here work great for cleaning surfaces up, gasket surfaces. Uh, 
and used her carbide tips a lot on the intake and on the heads. That wasn't expensive, you know. There's probably time you buy all that, you're probably I don't know, you might have a hundred dollars in it the time you bought all that. It reminds me I need to get some more of them little pads next time I'm down there. This really comes in handy. Yeah, I'm gonna be try to work on this thing all day, maybe tomorrow. Like my goal is to get it done by the end of the year. I, I might make it yet. I should be able to. Yeah, I just remember as a kid um, working on a lot of that stuff and just didn't have didn't have an engine hoist, didn't have an engine stand. And, but that's that's how we done a lot of that. And that's how we do a lot of that stuff today, you know, we just trying to rain on us again here. This engine was, I was surprised, it was not sludgy at all. It was it was pretty clean. It was one of the cleaner motors I've seen. You never know when you you lift the take a valve cover off or lift the intake off. I've seen them terrible in there. You know, and you wonder, man, what were you gonna do now? You know, I need to get the power washer out then, but this one was not all gunked up, thankfully. Thankfully it was not. And from what I can tell, just rolling it over, I think we're going to be okay on our uh, rocker arms. I was kind of worried about it. It is a higher lift cam. I think it's a 520 lift. I think those stock rockers were going to be fine. Well, folks, I'm going to sign out. Might see you tomorrow. Catch you later.